This is the coping saw. It's a waste removal tool, uh, like a general saw. The difference with this saw than uh, a lot of the normal saws is that it's a small blade and you actually can cut curves with it. Um, this is can be used on acrylic, thin acrylic, and also wood. It's not used for metal. It's made up of a handle, just one handle. It has a frame, they call this a C or a D frame. These are locking pins and adjustable, um, uh, adjustable pins. And we have our blade. The important thing with this is our teeth of our blades always face the handle. Okay, unlike the junior hacksaw or the hacksaw, the teeth face forward. In this case, the teeth face backwards. And so when we're cutting on our stroke, when we stroke back, it's actually cutting on the back stroke. Okay? A few important things to note about this is that um, if we hold this pin here and hold the frame together and twist this handle, we can loosen the blade. And this allows us to adjust it by pushing on the pins. So now uh, we tighten this back up. Now we're able to cut at that direction. This is very useful when we're caught into tight uh, scenarios or positions on materials that we're able to adjust the blade. But one thing when we're cutting it, normally we have to ensure that our blade isn't twisted. I can see there it's twisted. That we loosen the blade and that we line up the pins and we look down along it and we see that it's straight and then that the handle is secured and tight on our coping saw. Okay. Um, to cut with this, quite similar to the um, similar technique to the filing and to uh, cutting with the junior hacksaw, we get into our stance and it's one-handed and Again, we're utilizing as much of the blade as possible as we're going along. The teeth on this are a little bit uh, bigger, so it's going to bite into the material a little bit more. So it takes a little bit more time to get used to this coping saw. So we'll place this acrylic inside here. Again, we have our line. I'm just going to place my, uh, we'll just take off this plastic here, and we're going to place our X is to indicate the material you're going to remove. So this is goodbye. And we place our acrylic close to the vise. And we stick it up a little bit more. And then again, get into our approach. Stay away from the line. We're cutting the other side of the line uh, out a little bit so it leaves a little bit of margin of error. Again, the hardest part of this is to start it off and just put my finger and my nail in place to so give it a guide and then go really lightly. You'll notice my finger starting to tend to come out of the side of the frame. This is just to help to give more stability when I'm cutting. So, nice light. The lighter you go, the easier this is. And again, with this saw, you're going to be cutting curves. So, when you start twisting your hand, the blade, the blade will start going that direction. To get it to do that, and I'll start cutting a curve here, I have to um, get into a rhythm, and I have to go a little bit faster to get a curve going. So I'm going to hold my back, and I'm twisting. So I'm going nice long strokes, and I'm uh, if I want to cut it straight, I'm keeping my hand straight, but I'm cutting a bit of a curve here. So I'm just going to cut, I'll cut this off here to show you the curve. So just cut this off, nice long stroke. See the rhythm I'm getting into. So I was able to cut this piece here, and you can see the curves I've placed in it, and I curved it right out and cut it out. So this can be a very useful tool, cutting implement. Um, with the work we're going to be doing, so known as the coping saw. With this also, um, sometimes it tends that we can break the blade on it quite easily. When you break the blade, it's in the tendency that you're not doing the correct technique. So it's very important that you understand the correct technique. Going really light, going a nice long stroke, getting into a rhythm. If 
the material is in there. My blade is, let's just put down here. My blade is caught in here and it's stuck. If I start twisting, trying to get that out, what tends to happen is it'll just break the blade. Either my material will break or my blade will break. So in that circumstance, what we do is, if it's stuck, what we do is try to get it going again. Get it going again and get into a rhythm and then pop it out. Okay? If you're fully in doubt, just stop what you're doing, come over and ask the teacher, and they will get it out for you. As I said, these blades are very thin and very small, so they're easily uh, uh, easy for them to break. If they break, I want to show you how to uh, uh, replace it. So I'm just going to take this one off. So what I do is I'm holding the pin here and I twist the handle and what that does is it relieves the pressure or what we call the tension. Tension force is pulling on something. So when you're stretching and you're pulling it's tension force. So there's a tension force on it. So I twist the handle. If I keep twisting that handle it'll come off, you can see the bolt there. But I'll just twist it before it comes off, get this loose and what it allows me to do then is take off the blade. So that's the blade removed. Now, when we're replacing the blade, we've got to make sure that the teeth are facing towards the handle. And what I like to do is, I, there's pins on the other side of this. There's a pin there and a pin there. And these pins will sit into this slot up here. Okay, so place that in that slot. So what I tend to do is place the pins on the, the top part first, this top part here. And then what I do is, I keep a hold of it, and I bring it down to my back part, put pressure on it, and then place it in there. If you're getting too much pressure, what you can do is place this at the vise and squeeze down on it, and it'll give you pressure to place the pins in the back one. And then, very important, that you hold this and the frame, and then twist this closed. And that's how you change the cope and saw blade and twist it in, get the tension going tight and before you finish, line up the uh, pins line up the pins so that they're nice and straight and the blade is straight and again, anytime you take up this cope and saw, check that the blade is not twisted or um, the pins are straight so that's the cope and saw